Anthony, you've just established yourself as a very real threat, perhaps, to do something in this uh, 110 hurdles, haven't you? Yeah, well, that's what I came out here for, to be a threat, you know. And I just want to try to do my best to make this final and give them big guys some help. Because my trainer said to me, all I have to do here, I, have to, I shouldn't worry about nobody. They should be worrying about me, so... Hi, this is Classic Athletics bringing you a video on great British athlete Tony Jarrett. He's a Commonwealth Champion, European and World Championships medalist and Olympian. He was talented in both the 110 meter hurdles and the 100 meter sprint and a valued member of the relay team. He was mainly active during the late 80s, 90s and early 2000s. He's held the record for the 110 meter hurdles in England for over 25 years and is the second fastest British hurdler. Just to illustrate what a top-class athlete he was, his personal best of 13 seconds would have got him a gold at the Olympics in 2016 and a World Championship gold in 2019. If you want to know more about Tony Jarrett, stay tuned. Anthony Alexander Jarrett was born in 1968 in North London. Growing up, he was interested in lots of sports, football, basketball and athletics. Even though he described himself as a shy kid, I'm a shy person. <laughs> he said he would shine above his peers on sports day. Legendary British coach John Isaacs was in the crowd and basically scouted him. He told him that he could do well in athletics. I think he was persuaded when he found out that he coached Mike McFarlane, who was one of the eminent British sprinting talents in the 80s. Tony Jarrett became a member of Harringay Athletic Club, which produced many notable British athletes. Initially, he wanted to be a 100m sprinter, but Coach Isaac told him he would get recognised quicker if he did the hurdles. They worked hard practising using chairs, and he gradually learnt lead and trail leg techniques whilst beating upon his natural round speed. In 1987, he won the European Junior 110 meter hurdles, which set the stage for his professional career. At the 1998 Olympics, he competed in the 110 meter hurdles and reached the finals at the age of 20. In 1990 Commonwealth Games, he won a silver medal with a time of 13.34 seconds. Jackson flying to the first hurdle, Hugh Teat running well, Jackson getting away, Tony Jarrett is up with him in second place, and then Nigel Walker, Jackson flying again, Jarrett is going to be second, David Nelson is third, Hugh At the 1991 World Championships, he won a bronze medal in the 110 meter hurdles just behind Jack Pierce of USA. This time they get away, Foster was just a little slowly up, McCoy went very quickly, McCoy in the lead at the moment, Foster's come back to him, Jarrett's got plenty of work to do, it's Foster who leads at the moment, also going well there is Jack Pierce. Foster's got this in his pocket, Foster and Jack Pierce on the line, maybe Pierce grabbed them and he also got a bronze in the 4x100 meter relay. At the 1992 Olympics, he came in fourth, narrowly missing out on the bronze medal by a thousandth of a second to Jack Pierce. McCoy in front of Jackson, knocked it over, Jackson can't win. McCoy in front, D's coming at him. McCoy in front of D's and slide off Jackson again. McCoy hangs on the win. At the 1993 World Championships in Stuttgart, he won a silver medal in the 110 meter hurdles just behind his British teammate Colin Jackson. He ran a time of 13 seconds on the nose, which is his personal best and also an English record. Oh, Jackson got a good one. It's Jackson in the first hurdle. Also going well is Pierce and Jarrett. And it's Jackson going away. Two to go. Jackson takes it. Jarrett gets the silver. 12.9. Here's a video of him and Colin Jackson immediately after the race. <laughs> Congratulations to the English record holder. 13 0 0. Woo! Yeah, that's quick. Well, I'd like to say thanks to my mum, my dad, and all my family, for my coach, Mike McFarlane, John Smith, and um, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. The whole shebang. There's, nobody left. There's nobody left in London. Uh, everybody you know, who helped me along, the people at Harringay, I'm there. Well done, boys, for a moment of athletic history. In the 1994 Commonwealth Games, he represented England and won another silver medal. At the 1995 World Championships, he won a silver medal behind Alan Johnson with another fast time of 13.04 seconds. Clean. 
Vanakaib okay, Jarrett leads Kingdom clearly, Johnson got a terrific start, Johnson in front of Jarrett at halfway, Vanderkaip's about third or fourth, Jarrett coming back at Johnson, Johnson not the last down. Up to this point, he had not won a gold medal at a major event, and even made jokes about it. He's going to share the gold out sometime, I bet. Give me a squeeze. <laughs> Give me a squeeze. I'm getting pure silvers and bronze here. My mum's getting upset. <laughs> Cheers, Tony. Thanks so much. But that was all about to change. At the 1998 Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur, he won a gold medal in the 110 metre hurdles ahead of Steve Brown of Trinidad. Unfortunately, Jarrett was disqualified for full start at both the 2000 Olympic Games and the 2001 World Championships. In 2003, following two operations to his cruciate ligament, he retired due to injury. Since retiring, Tony Jarrett has made media appearances on the BBC Breakfast Show and on various radio stations. He also does youth mentoring and motivational speaking, especially Christian faith-based talks which is very important to him. He got into coaching when Mike McFarlane, who had already started coaching, asked him to help with one of the youths. He was initially sceptical about coaching but found it rewarding after realising that he could share his knowledge of hurdling techniques so that these young athletes could reach their full potential. In one interview, he actually said that he got a similar rush of excitement when he saw his athletes at the starting block. Since then, he's gone from strength to strength and has set up an athlete development website which does workshops and one-on-one -on -one training for aspiring professional athletes. It's called 110byl.com and the BYL stands for Beyond Your Limits. There's not many interviews of Tony Jarrett on YouTube, but there is a really good long interview on the channel Masters Grand Prix Track and Field, which I will link in the description box. He's certainly not very shy anymore, and if you're an athletics fan, it's quite an entertaining watch. He really goes into detail about his own story, but also aspects of hurdling technique, endurance training, and why some current athletes are successful. He's active on social media. Follow him on Instagram and Twitter at Tony Jarrett 110 and also 110BYL on Instagram. So that concludes my video on Tony Jarrett. If you'd like this video, please like, share and subscribe. I have plenty more videos coming.